In these videos, I use shortcut keys to make modeling more efficient. Shortcut keys are set up under Shortcuts, under System Preferences. To assign a key, start typing in the menu designation. In the filter box, for instance, Hide, select Edit Hide, type in the letter you want. Now this faucet neck not only curves, but it flares outwards. It's changing continuously as it flows along that path. So we can't use just a simple follow me on this. We're going to have to get a little more creative. First step is to identify the path that we want it to take. So I'm going to just L, draw a line, and it works great because this is a, comp or a group so it won't merge to it as I draw lines on top of it. L to draw a line. I'm going to snap to the CAD endpoints. I'm just identifying the path of this curve. So now I'll triple click on that line and it finds everything interconnected and then M will move it upwards in the blue and again let's just use five five's an easy number to remember so there's our path now we need a profile to follow that path plus we want that path to all be coplanar and they're not right now so let's fix that we'll draw a line from there to there and since it fills in a surface we know those were all coplanar. I think our non-coplanar stuff started down here somewhere. We've now established a plane. I'm going to draw down in the blue simply to enlarge that surface, make it an easier target to touch to. Let's make a quick group of it, G, so that we can get rid of the rest of the model and see it more clearly. Now we're going to move and see there's just individual vertexes here. So I can click on that, move it in the green. If I hold down shift, it'll, come on, hold down shift, it'll stay locked in the green. Then I touch on the surface and it moves it to be exactly on that surface. So I can grab all those little line segments that we'd been drawing and resolve them to all be coplanar. Now if we've done this right, all those should form one surface because they're all coplanar. So let's try drawing a line from there to there and see, and indeed we've straightened them all out. Now they all lie in the same plane. I'm going to set the background color to make this a little easier to see. To window, styles, edit tab, and we'll set the background color. I'll just make it a little bit grayer so we can see the white as we keep working. All right, so now we've got this plane. We really want just the top of that to be our path. And there are too many vertices. What we're trying to do is limit the number of vertexes. And right now, we've just repeated the same number that were in there before. A for arc, and let's try an 8-sided, eight 8S. Eight if we go from that endpoint to that endpoint, there's our curve, and if we touch on it and click there on the CAD, we're very close to the curve path of the other, but we've limited it to eight segments all along there now, instead of the bunch that we had before. And we'll do the same thing down here, but maybe we'll do arc A and four segments, four sides. Do a four-sided arc and use the cat again. Click there and do the same here. Click from there to there, four-sided on the face and touch there. The reason I like arcs is they create even segmentation for our follow me path so our profiles will be evenly spaced okay let's establish the profile we want to cut or to sweep excuse me let's draw a profile 
a plane in space and then move that plane up onto our, the neck of our faucet. So I'm going to find an endpoint there. Move that down a little. This will be forming our profile, but I want to rotate it so that it's more perpendicular to the faucet. Take the Rotate tool, or Shift-R, and use the piano hinge method where I drag the initial point away so I set the plane of rotation as normal to where my cursor was. So now it's aligned to the green axis. Click and start to rotate. It's going to come way out and look at it from the side and get a good sense of what looks to me to be 90 degrees to the neck of the faucet. Click to place it. That will form my profile. Right click and intersect faces with the model. In other words, that face. Triple click and move it out. We'll do the five inches thing again so we can see where it is. L for line and start tracing to simplify the profile. There's a bunch of little bitty line segments in here. See all those endpoints? We want to eliminate that and make it more simple. I'll first, select all of that and make a quick group of it. And now I can trace over top of it and my new profile won't merge to all that line work. Start and draw a line. I'm just snapping to endpoints and I will isolate where the curve starts. I'll guess there. Great. Now I know it lines up across in the green. Draw back down. Forms a surface. There's my profile surface. Add an arc. A and I'll do four sides, 4S, four endpoint to endpoint, and use the CAD, place it, erase that. Do the same on the other side, A for arc, still at four segments. Click to place it, erase it. There's my profile. Select my new profile and move it back. I can move it in the red and then just type minus 5 and it puts it back near my faucet. I want that to be my profile and then my path has already been select has already been drawn. Turn off the faucet so I can see my profile. Triple click so I get all of them. Make a copy of that downwards. I always leave the original in case I need to do it again. Copy that down five inches. Erase this out of the way. We don't need it any longer. I've got everything I need. Triple click. Select my path. Before I do, let's check here. That's four segments, and this one is nine segments. That's way too many segments down there. I'm going to change that to be three or even two. Two segments. That's better. All right. Triple click. F for follow me. And there's our new neck for our faucet. Follow me aligns the profile perpendicular to the path, so we don't have to worry that the original one wasn't perfectly perpendicular. That's part of what Follow Me does. Triple click to select everything and make a quick group of that or make a component of it. That's fine. Either way, group. Now we can toggle, as I edit this, we can toggle between seeing 
the rest of the model and not. You can see that we'll need to start pulling this in and pulling that out down below to follow the path of the original faucet. Here's where SketchUp really shines. Select. It's a three-step process. This is the surface I want. As for scale, to scale it, I can hold down Option or Control, and it will scale about the middle of the profile, so it will stretch in both directions evenly. But it's going to stretch in three dimensions. I'm going to hit Escape to interrupt it because the bounding box is three-dimensional. We want that to be planar or only on that face, so the face alone stretches and not warping itself out of plane. The way to do that, spacebar, to clear the selection, right-click on the face. Align the axis to the face. Now, scale, and it's a two-dimensional bounding box and it will scale based on that. Turn on the rest of the model. Go about the center, so Control or Option. Click, and I can move it in and out till I meet the CAD line work. So I will touch that endpoint on the CAD. That pulls it inwards. Now the top and the bottom seem to be a little different. Click on just the top and pull upwards leaving the bottom. I'm not doing it by the center, but just the bottom. Click when I'm lined up to the CAD line work. There's the top orbit underneath, because they're not symmetric. The sides were symmetric. I do it about the center. Top and bottom aren't, so I just do them independently. Find that point. If you have trouble finding the point, T for x-ray mode, transparency, to find the point, click on it, then T to bring the transparency back off. And I'm going to move upwards until I find the CAD line work. Come on. And click to place it. So now I'm lined up against the CAD. We won't worry about that minor discontinuity there. We've lined up that profile with the, geom the actual geometry, and you notice how it's now starting to flare and taper. So that's the three-step process. <clears throat> Align the axis to the face, select it, scale it, and then we'll delete that face. So L, draw in the face, establish the face, right-click, align the axis to the face, and S to scale the face. About the center in this case. I'll turn on the CAD geometry. Click, so it's flaring both sides. Touch on the CAD geometry for endpoint, and we can zoom in. You just want to make sure you're actually touching the CAD geometry near the scale grips and not forward or backward of it too far. Because sometimes you won't see it clearly, but it is lined up real closely to the CAD geometry. We'll find the top grip. Click, pull it upwards, touch on the CAD. Okay, that's a little high, but not too bad. And the bottom. Touch on the end point of the CAD, and now you can really see how it's starting to adjust to the actual CAD shape. Just keep doing that. Select it and delete it. L to establish our next plane. Right click. Align axes. S for scale. Show the rest of the model. Scale about the midpoint or center. Find the CAD geometry near it. Find the top edge. There's a midpoint, that's good. Orbit from underneath, click. Zoom in and find the CAD near it. Midpoint looks good. And again, we start to see it taking shape. Next, draw a line in, establish the plane. 
right click, align the axes, S to scale. T for transparency if we cannot find it quickly. L, establish the plane, right click, align the axes, S to scale. Now we'll really see the effect of what we've been doing. Now we are following the CAD very closely but with much fewer polygons, much simpler geometry. I'm going to continue that same establish the plane, scale, blah, 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 till I come down here. Now at this point, we've reached the limit of where the CAD goes. We have a couple more planes to work, so they'll extend below, and then we'll clean that up. Before I go much further, I'm going to isolate where this overlap is so it doesn't mess up my geometry. Turn off perspective, line things up, and select crossing window. Through all that stuff, make a quick group of that so it will not affect my scaling of the other objects. Looks to me like I could take this one, that one, that one, and that one, and put that back in the other group. I'm going to make a group of that, cut it, control X or command X, cut it out of the geometry, click that out to this group, shift P to paste in place, right click and explode it, and it's merged back into there. So that would be the end of our path profile that we'll be scaling from. All right, on with the show. I'm going to select this and hide it, just H to hide it. Well, that's not going to work. Unhide. We'll create a layer. We'll just call this hidden. Z hidden. I do Z so it's always at the end of the list. We'll turn it off and we'll put that on Z hidden so that we can work without seeing it and being interrupted by it. All right, we can work from the back side here just as easily. L, establish the face, right click, align axes, S to scale it, back out, turn the cat on. You know the drill. Now here it's hard to see how it's working, so I'll turn off the rest of the model and just go to the side. And all I'm doing is watching up in here to make sure this line, uh, let me show you, to make sure this line flows in line with that line. Select it, scale it, click it, so see how it's moving down. And here's what I was talking about. We're going to go below the platform of the faucet. Not to worry, we'll trim that out. And just watch that that slopes the way we want it. Whoa. Delete it. Last face.
line axis, scale it. I'm just looking against the CAD so that there's where we'll be merging into the rest of the geometry. Find the end point, maybe. Looks good. Scale it. So there's our tapering complex to turn off hidden geometry tapering neck all from the scale and push pull or scale a line axis and scale method let's turn on the hidden stuff and see how that needs to scale to match so let's start with that Select the two halves. Turn on the rest of the model. Turn off the faucet. We want to scale this at the middle till it lines up with our old or our new old geometry. So that brought them there. And I would just stitch it. Let's see where it meets the faucet. Yeah, it's all within the body of the faucet, so we don't have to worry. That's good enough, and then I will stitch these up manually. What I mean by that is, look outside. We're going to explode this. And then use the Move tool. Clear any selection and move just vertexes up to match vertexes. So move this endpoint, starting with, and auto fold and click to place it. Again, turning on transparency quickly. Seems to find auto folds, right? Endpoints better. Click. Turn on auto fold, click to the point. Spin around, click, auto fold, find the end point. Click, auto fold, find the end point. Click, auto fold, won't find the end point. T for transparency, find the end point. Click, auto fold. Let's combine these. T to find the endpoint. Click, auto fold, find the endpoint. All of that's oops, within the faucet. Oops, didn't even need to worry about it so far. Just around the corner. So we're not even going to worry about that other stuff as it goes below. Actually, that's not entirely true. Let's move this one. Click, auto fold, T for transparency, find the endpoint. Click, auto fold, T for transparency, find the endpoint. That's looking good. Click outside. So there's our tapered faucet. Let's go ahead and soften these edges, smooth them out. Spacebar, double click to edit, triple click to select everything, then right click and soften smooth edges. We want to soften coplanar, so make sure that's checked. And that looks good. Uh, I'm not sure why that one didn't. Let's turn on transparency and see what's going on. Oh, there's a couple lines inside there. Let's select those and delete them. And see if we can soften that, smooth it. 
Yeah, there's a little floating triangle in there, up in there. All right, so that looks good. Got a nice smooth faucet neck. It's looking good. Now we'll model the faucet head where the water comes out. 